Level number three. I call it the gray sky. The gray sky. It's gloomy, it's dark, it's misty. The visibility is very, very low. You can barely see. You have to depend on your compass. Your compass is your guiding spirit because you can't see any longer. That inner vision, that which sees the end product, that which sees the destiny, that's what you're depending on. At this particular point in time, you've got to believe that the dots will add up someday. You've got to believe that you break through to the open heavens, to the open sky. When you're in this place, you will feel like quitting. You will doubt yourself. You will doubt the path. You will doubt the voyage. You will doubt your strategies. You will doubt your calling. You will doubt what you're doing. You will even doubt your business strategy. Extremely, right at this point. You will feel like quitting. You know, there is a point on your way to Elephant Hill at the Abadeas. They call it the point of despair. I renamed it when I was there to the point of hope. A point of no return. Because at that particular point, retreating is devastating. It can get dangerously fatal. In fact, if you retreat at this particular point in time, you will destroy your willpower to ever attempt again, to ever try again. So I suggest tonight, when it gets so dark, look for the stars. When it rains so hard, look for the rainbows. Press on with a sense of purpose and mission. Begin to believe that the dots will add up someday. Begin to believe you emerge to the sunshine. Unfortunately, this is the point where many people retreat and return. We have the highest drop rate at the gray sky. Now, what are the features right here? Number one is similarity. Everyone looks like everyone else. You can't tell the difference, even among products, until you see the label of the brand. They all look the same. When they build houses, they build the same. The doctors have the same language and they're specialists. Organizations, banks have different products, but the same products, different companies, different labels, whether insurance companies. Drinks, the same malt, the same whatever. Similarity. You can't tell the difference between the players. Number two, there is cutthroat competition. So people resort to price cutting and discounts. People resort to lowering the standards to enhance the margins. You see, price cutting and putting things on sale is not a sustainable business strategy. You can't undercut your way to prosperity. It is not sustainable. So here we have a lot of price wars. So what a lot of organizations do at the gray sky, and if this is you, if this is your business, whether you're employed or it's your own business, and you realize that the first thing you think as an organization is lowering the price down to attract customers. If you've been discussing how to lower your prices, do not ask any further. You're operating where? At the gray sky. Number three, fatigue. People are tired and beaten. They are so beaten that you can see it on the face. And this is where the term in Kenya, hustler, comes from. They have hustled, you can see it. You know you can see someone who is beaten right on the face. Right on the face. Regrettably, most employers do not know how to handle their wounded soldiers. They crush their wounded soldiers. At this particular moment, they pour vitro and their own frustrations to their employees. At this particular moment, they invoke threats and redundancies. And I want to tell you this. If you are listening to me and you're in a position of leadership, at this particular point in time, outsource consultants who can see the hope in that organization, who can help you re-engineer. You can be too beaten to inspire others. At this particular point in time, you will need inspiration that is not rhetoric, Someone who is sure about the ground reality. Someone who has facts and figures to help you revamp. And I propose a few tactics. And the very first one, keep the production line constant. The highest temptation at this stage is to cut down on the production line. And when you do that, your employees are the very first one to doubt what you're doing. They're the very first one to tell your customers you're closing down shop. At this particular point in time, 
you must be careful. Don't scale up, don't branch out, don't increase production, but keep the momentum. Just sustain the production line. Don't lower it down. Believe me, the moment you lower it down, that same employee who is there is the first one to tell the market, you're about to close down shop, you're clearing stock. And I tell you, that is the reason I came up with this. Here are some guys who are climbing a mountain, they're summiting. And when you are summiting, the gray sky is the most peaked part of the mountain. That particular point you do early in the morning, I remember when we were doing Mount Kenya this year in February, we summited from 3 o'clock in the morning. So you use the headlight and you can only see one step. You can't see beyond the step. But you go believing that you're going to summit. You go believing you're going to see the sunshine when you summit. You can only see one step and it's okay at this particular point in time to just do one step. But keep doing just that one step. Just do it. Secondly, increase your brand visibility. Increase your brand visibility. Now, I want to go back to this picture, the gray sky, and tell you why I'm telling you to increase your brand visibility. You realize this area is gray and dark and misty. I want you to know this. While you cannot be seen, you can be heard. Do you know planes, while you can't see them in the clouds, you can still hear them? So the idea here is to ensure you increase your visibility. Ensure they see you. Engage your propaganda machinery full gear. Make the most noise. Make the enemy believe you're so near even when you're very far. Make the enemy believe you have put your art together even when it's collapsing. This is the time you have to put your best foot forward even when you're not sure what next. One day at a time. Because unless, you see, people's perception is their reality. Unless the noise is serious, they'll start believing you're collapsing. So you've got to assure both the internal and the external customers that we are still moving on. And that's why the production line is on. And thirdly, re-engineer the organization. And, and you do this primarily by looking at four things. The first thing you check when you want to re-engineer an organization is your entire business model. The second thing you check is your customer base. And it might need you to recluster your target audience, to resegment your target audience. Even some products should just be for a certain segment. And the third thing you need to check is your products. You may even be bold enough, have the audacity to sell off a certain product. You can retain a few products. You may want to release not necessarily the non-performing. Sometimes you can strategically release a very performing product to get the capital that is needed to be injected back into the business. And the fourth thing you need to check is your brand. You might want to rebrand yourself altogether. And a lot of organizations at this particular point in time, they rebrand altogether. And you might want to rebrand. And every single three years, think about it. Even in Sense 101, this coming August, we will think about our brands again. Every single three years, rethink about your brand. Don't digress too much, but think whether the brand is working. Test your brand out there. Now, ask your neighbor, are you in the gray sky?